Hello, viewers. Welcome to another show of Speakers Gallery. Our guest today is Dr. Nancy Baraza. Nancy Baraza is a former Deputy Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. She is currently a lecturer at the University of Nairobi Law School. Welcome, Dr. Nancy Baraza. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Dr. Nancy Baraza, we have had a big national moral reawakening because our president, the government, the opposition seems to have come together in what is now Christian as a famous handshake. And the centerpiece of that is to fight corruption. And all of them are in agreement that the biggest impediment to the fight against corruption in the country is the judiciary. In the short period you're there, in the judiciary as a deputy chief justice, the judiciary undertook some of the most, I would say, far-reaching reforms in terms of uh, uh, making sure that access to justice is there in the country. Can you tell us what you left behind, how you expected it to perform, and where we are today? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, I think the handshake um, has turned out to be good for the country. Um, for the fact that uh, leaders are putting their heads together and focusing on issues which touch on ordinary Kenyans and more so this monster called corruption, which is eating, it has eaten to the um, roots of, of, of our society and it must be fought. So personally I would say um, I'm excited. Um, at the narrative that uh, the leadership has, has taken, but it, it should go beyond just the narrative. I think we should be more serious, take more serious steps, and be serious about tackling um, uh, corruption. Um, the judiciary is an institution which, if it functions well at its optimum, uh, should be able to contribute a lot to the fight against um, um, corruption. Yes. And um, <clears throat> when I was there, um, together with uh, the former Chief Justice, Willy Mutunga, yes. we put together a very, very formidable integrated framework. Very um, ambitious. Very, very ambitious uh, to tackle the issues of um, of, of reforming the judiciary, mm -hmm. of how we can make um, uh, justice accessible to Kenyans, mm -hmm. of how we can um, tackle corruption, which has bedeviled um, the judiciary for years. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and this, 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 every Kenyan has talked about it. Uh, when we were doing the constitution, making the constitution, mm -hmm. that was the biggest concern for mm -hmm. Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And for those of us who had practiced law mm -hmm. in those courts, mm -hmm. we knew that corruption was real. Mm -hmm. And so our intention with um, uh, coming up with this integrated um, uh, judiciary transformation framework was to make a holistic approach to tackling issues of, of, of the judiciary, problems of the judiciary problems of delays in in in, in, mm, in judgments in, 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 yes uh, problems in uh, financial management mm -hmm. problems of fighting corruption mm -hmm. and, and, and and it was a very ambitious uh, program part of it has been fulfilled to some extent but um, something like corruption corruption is extremely insidious it is not something that can be wiped away within a day. Mm -hmm. But I think with concerted efforts and with proper mechanisms in place, I think we can lessen it. Yeah, yeah it, it can be reduced. We, one of the things that uh, as, 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 a, 
as an authority on jurisprudence. And because I know this, I attended your class in jurisprudence, on jurisprudence. And as somebody who has also practiced law, both as a judge, and a deputy chief justice, as well as, as an advocate of the high court, what we see right now is the independence of the three arms, of the independence of the different arms of the government or the state, the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary. Other than the judiciary, the two others have got their own internal mechanisms to make sure that independence itself is not a shield on, on impurity. But why isn't the judiciary having also an internal mechanism, an internal oversight, internal accountability, that both is able to interrogate the decisions of judges and the lack of decisions, the length this matters take, and the things that are in the grapevines. Why don't you have in the judiciary a system that interrogates that the same way the executive has its own internal systems to interrogate its actions or lack of actions? The same also with Parliament. Why isn't that there in the judiciary? Why was independence of judiciary taken as a blank check? Um, I think they have mechanisms. But as you know, uh, judges make independent decisions. Yes. Uh, so that as, um, as, 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 as the leadership of, of the judiciary uh, looks into ways and means of ensuring that uh, the, the judiciary is functioning well, it, it, it takes into account the fact that judges are independent so that you cannot follow judges and say, uh, why have you written this judgment? Why have you written this judgment this way? You cannot. Of course, we have the appellate mechanism where a party is dissatisfied with a magistrate's decision, it goes to the High Court or a High Court decision, it goes to the Court of Appeal, way up to the Supreme Court. So I think that is a regulation that Kenyans need to understand, that uh, you cannot question charges and, uh, and, 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 and fault them on their decisions. They are independent. Yes. Yes, they are independent. Your lady, the other leadership, your lady. In any other, what you call jurisdiction that are similar to us, Westminster, the American system, the British system, all of them have got internal mechanisms in which they interrogate the decisions that was reached by a judge within the judiciary itself. And if it's way out of the, 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 the what they can call is, is the, the limit, acceptable limit within, within the practice itself, they call that to order. And in the process, that's what is called uh, judicial accountability in the UK, for example, in the US, and judges can even lose their jobs. Because in the case of the US, actually, the decisions of judges are not only accountable to the judiciary itself, it's also accountable, there's a public scrutiny in that. And in that public scrutiny itself, there's massive discussions that comes into it. Whether the letter and the spirit of the law was taken into consideration, whether there are other considerations that inform the decision of the judge, because they are seriously outrageous decisions, which even people in the legal fraternity cannot understand how it was arrived at. For such a judge to be shielded from internal scrutiny is, 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 is in my opinion, the, the worst impunity that can be there in any institution, any arm of the government. The same way we scrutinize the decisions of parliament itself, including public scrutiny itself, there has to be a certain internal mechanism that essentially deals with exceptionally outrageous uh, decisions by judges, and, and judges must be able to also face the, face the consequences. I think... Not just the appellate, not just at the appellate level. Um, of course, the appellate system is good <laughs> enough, but yes. uh, where a judge uh, makes an outrageous mm. judgment yes. which does not accord to law, mm. for example, it could be a manifestation of, of, of incompetence. And we in, have provisions, in, yes. In, in, incompetence or, 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 or uh, other considerations. And in this case, we are fighting corruption for information. Absolutely. Yes. And uh, we have a complaint mechanism where parties can complain to the Judicial Service Commission citing the incompetence of a judge. 
And that incompetence can be pinned to the outrageous judgments, which do not accord to any law at all. Or where there is a clear uh, suspicion that it could have been uh, influenced by extraneous uh, factors. I think there is that uh, complaint mechanism to the Judicial Service Commission. Which, which I don't think is being exploited well, yes. but, but there is that mechanism. Your lady, yes. check for example the case in which a member of the Judicial Service Commission was taken to court. And the entire legal fraternity in the country was up in arms. You're talking about advocates of the High Court, you're talking about judges, although the judges did not express, they normally don't express it, but you can see through the judgments and the rulings that they were giving, that there is a clear uh, a kind of uh, what you would, for lack of a better word, a, 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 a labor, you know, movement kind of a thing. You know, what you find in the labor movement, people of the same fraternity standing and ganging up together. It looks more like Nat or Kotu. Uh, and, and these are the kind of things that really, because even before the matter has been heard, it's you know, ex exhaustively, uh, what do you call, uh, 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 fought on both sides, the adversarial side, uh, nature of the things. Here are, are lawyers who are already passing judges, uh, judgments, and what the kind of rulings that the judges give also does indicate a camaraderie, you know, between people in that fraternity itself. And then the same people also in the Judicial Service Commission, they're the employers. Here is a lawyer who is act practicing law and who can come in front of a judge, but is also the, the employer of that judge. So don't you see we have the, the judiciary has a serious problem on that? I think there is a serious problem being created and uh, it is of concern to, to people. Uh, from where I sit with ordinary Kenyans, yes. with students who yes. critique yes. Uh, the performance of judges and, 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 and lawyers, etc. Uh, a problem is being created. Uh, where you create a situation where Kenyans fail that you want uh, different um, uh, treatment of, of, of certain uh, sections of society, then, then that is problematic. Uh, I, I, I think um, uh, we need to be careful uh, not to um, create this, this picture to the Kenyans yes. that uh, when it is lawyers, uh, being accused of whatever... Um, uh, Condoning what essentially looks like, you know, at that time there's no conviction yet. But even that element of bringing to court the DPP, the Director of Public Prosecution, fighting something and saying there's a vice here. Ordinarily in the rest of the world, when you hear somebody is a suspect in, in a haste or a theft, everybody sits back, including their very closest friends. They say, we never expected so and so, but let's wait and see how this thing unfolds. Here is a society, a legal fraternity, that the moment you touch one of them, all of them are up in arms and saying, no, he cannot be wrong. And, and, and the matter has not even been argued in court. I think that is a problem. And uh, from where I sit, yes. uh, people are saying that is a problem. Yes. What is it that the DPP is, is talking about? Yes. Oh, is it like we shouldn't know what is going on? Mm -hmm. And, 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 and that is creating a wrong impression. I think we are a country which uh, respects the rule of law, mm -hmm. um, where we should all um, be treated equally before the law and by the law. Yes. And, and, and so where we make it look like if you belong to the legal fraternity, mm -hmm. or uh, if you are a judge and uh, you are caught up in this, that it should be different. I think then we are giving out a wrong, wrong impression. And then um, when, when the investigations and the prosecution and the rest of it is underway, people are running again to the courts, the high court again, to get one order after the other, including orders that say you cannot, you cannot investigate. <laughs> you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can't scrutinize. I mean, Kerry can do this. The police can say he cannot do this. The, the, these are the kind of things that are are creating, we wanted this independence of the judiciary itself as a way because the judiciary is the, uh, the, is the custodian of the constitution. It's supposed to be the arbiter of the other two arms of the government and the public. But here is the judiciary itself that is having what you call, for lack of a better, uh, a pack or, or a herd, you know, a pack, pack of, pack of wolves like. Uh, you know, they hang on to something and they say, no, you cannot touch our own. 
uh, we, we, it's, it, it, it's a problem. And, and how do you, in your opinion, think we can deal with these things? Because in the UK, for example, there are two kinds of accountability. They, they have what they call the sacrificial accountability and they have what they call the explanatory accountability. Explanatory accountability is that this institution, this body itself, has got to explain what it has done, what it has achieved, what uh, benchmarks it has reached, why certain things were not done so fast, mm -hmm. why did a case take six years or seven years or ten years. Mm -hmm. There has to be an explanation of those. Mm -hmm. Sacrificial is when you have members of parliament, for example, uh, angling to make sure that they, they, they go and sacrifice one of their own because of one reason or the other. Mm -hmm. and, and that does happen occasionally. I saw mm -hmm. it in there when we were passing certain law on the anti-corruption body itself and uh, Lumumba was there. Mm -hmm. But, but there are serious issues and serious concerns in the manner in which the judiciary right now is transacting the administration of justice in, in the country. And, and it is being seen. For example, we, 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 we saw the, you saw the two, the Akashas. You saw the drugs issues. Mm. You see these land issues that take forever for a lifetime. Mm. You take the inheritance issues that take for a lifetime until whatever has to be, have to be inherited ends up being <laughs> what comes out as a court cost and what is taken by lawyers. Mm. So the poor guys or the poor families that were fighting over inheritance hardly end up with anything many, many years later when most of the senior members who would have inherited that are dead. So, so what, in your opinion, looking at this thing in that holistic manner, what do we need to do? I want to ask you a few more questions of the same, but what do, you need, what do we need to do to cure this problem, in your opinion? I think central to our um, uh, laying out our transformation framework yes. was uh, uh, expeditious at the disposal of cases. Absolutely. And, um, Which doesn't happen now, in, in, by and large. Um, I understand it is not happening. People, we've sort of relapsed into the old days where um, parties wait for judgment for years, uh, where, as you say, um, cases are, you know, taking forever. long. Forever. That is unfortunate. I think for me, uh, when I applied for that job of Deputy Chief Justice, yes. uh, my intention uh, was that... Uh, as administration of the judiciary, mm -hmm. we were going to make that uh, a thing of the past. And indeed, um, the new constitution opened up um, uh, spaces for employing more judges and more magistrates, which we have done, mm -hmm. which, which has been done, mm -hmm. and, um, and, 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 and enhanced financing, mm -hmm. uh, uh, financing of mm -hmm. the judiciary, Absolutely. which has been done. Mm -hmm. And then now people are complaining. Uh, they, they, they go to court. Um, their judgment is not delivered. I, I went back to my law practice, by the way. Mm -hmm. I have been trying to get a judgment in a court in Kiambu. Mm -hmm. And it has been uh, postponed for five times now. This is two years. Mm -hmm. No judgment. And, 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 and people are saying that is happening almost everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, that defeats the very purpose of transformation. Yeah. If Kenyans cannot uh, be served expeditiously, if judgments cannot be delivered within 41 days, mm -hmm. and, and that was our intention in yes. our earlier um, steps to reform, mm -hmm. that within strategic a matter plan. of... Yes, plan. yes. Let, let Kenyans get their judgment. Why is it taking two years and three years to get a judgment? A judge says come for a judgment yeah. in two months' time, or in yes. a month's time, or in three yeah. months' time. Yeah. And that same judge takes two years. Yes, and you, and and if you it go takes, there? Does, does that judge have any right, any moral authority to hold that job any further? Isn't that the kind of judge within that internal mechanism itself who should have been eased off his, 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 his employment by having both administrative oversight because you see this administrative oversight and the judicial oversight, but administrative oversight in that you give a, frame, you give a time frame for something and it takes forever. I think that needs to be done, but um, much as we have the framework in place, I think probably we, don't, we are not uh, looking at our um, evaluation and monitoring mechanisms mm -hmm. so that um, the, the, the leadership of the judiciary knows that uh, this is not happening. Okay, we employed many judges. Almost everybody's a judge in yes, Kenya now. Yes, yes. 
So why aren't we having cases disposed of? Quickly, Including quickly. The petition cases. Uh, the petition uh, cases, and we had elections in 2017. This is 2019, almost two years later, and they're still not uh, uh, disposed of. I, I, I think there, the, the petition area, they have done quite well. I think at, it's the appellate at, at system. At the, at the, at the, yeah. At the, at the, yeah. at the, at the judge level, at yeah. the first, uh, first uh, instance level, first instance level, yeah. and even the second instance level, but at the uh, Supreme Court right now, they've taken forever. So, and and the worst part of it is that you declare a, a person a certain, you nullify an election, and and um, of of a governor, for example, and that governor stays in office for another one year. Isn't he not going to go literally and clean up the coffers of that county? I think now, what to do after? Yes. I think we need more mechanisms yes. to, to, to monitor um, and evaluate yes. our efforts. That is not there. And that is why people can wait for a judgment for, mm -hmm. for a whole year. Mm -hmm. For even or, more than that. Yeah. For, yeah, and it is happening, which mm -hmm. is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, jurisdictions, as you mentioned, uh, US, I, I studied, mm -hmm. um, stayed in the US studying their, mm -hmm. their judicial system. Mm -hmm. Extremely expeditious. Yes. There is no way. Very efficient. Extremely efficient. Yes. And th that has to do yes. with their own discipline, mm -hmm. As, a, as an individual judge, uh, that is your as, own discipline. As well as internal. As well as the internal mechanisms the which judiciary. they obey. Yes. Which they obey. Yes. And here it means mm -hmm. those mechanisms are not there. The other thing. I, I would susp suspect they are not there. We yes. are not following up to know mm -hmm. these reforms that we say we are undertaking. Mm -hmm. and, and, and eventually the reforms should lead towards Wanjiku getting a judgment as expeditiously as possible. It leads towards Wanjiku getting and realizing justice as soon as possible. So it looks like the reform is an end in itself. Yes. It shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. We should have monitoring evaluation mechanisms on individual judges mm -hmm. and uh, the mode of work. I think that one is lacking. Mm -hmm. and, 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 once, and once we go back mm -hmm. to where you have to wait for judgment forever, mm -hmm. where people in land cases have to litigate for 10 years, yes. where widows yes. are losing out on their children, their, their children drop out of schools. Uh, absolutely. Yes, and, yes. and then yes. why are we there as a yes. judiciary? Yes. For me, it defeats the yes. very purpose of, of, of the reforms. The other bit that I... I, I, which, in my opinion, is, is, is a puzzle. It's a puzzle in the sense that it looks like a joke. Maybe a puzzle is not. Is that you are a member of the Law Society of Kenya. The judges are members of the Law Society of Kenya. They're members of LSK. They can choose to renew their licenses or they are not required to reduce their licenses for them to practice law as judges or as magistrates. But there they are, they can renew their licenses and they can vote. And they can decide who becomes the leader of uh, the leaders of uh, uh, G, uh, the LSK. So these are people who are in school together. These are people who are in the same fraternity together, the Law Society of Kenya. These are people who uh, vote together and canvass one another. And these are the people, same people who, again, when they're looking for jobs, will still find their colleagues in the Judicial Service Commission to go and canvass with them so that they can also be assured of jobs. And they will appear before them the following day. Don't we have it all wrong? Don't we need to have a situation in which judges are completely separate from the Law Society of Kenya? They are not in, in any way involved with the, act, the active uh, advocates of, of, of the high court or the courts in the country. I so, so that you can you can separate that, and where uh, advocates cannot serve on the judicial on the judicial service commission, because you can't employ somebody today as chief justice and, and deputy chief justice and judges of the supreme court and judges of the court of appeal and judges of the high court and you appear before them tomorrow when you, that judge knows that if it's not for such member of the judicial service commission I would not be sitting here today. There is a debt. Uh, I think now we, we, we put those systems, the new constitution gave those systems, the Judicial Service Commission, the composition thereof, etc. Mm -hmm. But we've tested it 
And, and, and I think there are areas emerging where mm -hmm. I think we can revisit. Mm -hmm. They can be revisited. And mm -hmm. I but, but you, agree you, you entirely agree with, with you. This, yes. I agree with you mm -hmm. entirely mm -hmm. that uh, uh, members, uh, members of law society who sit on, 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 on the Judicial Service Commission yes. um, should not be sitting there. Or should not be even practicing be practicing. Law. Yes, one of the two. That, Either they, they yeah, forego it, practice of the law and completely, and of course, Judicial Service Commission is, is, is a pro bono thing. I don't think they get paid salaries, they only get paid allowances. But that cannot sustain them. So, ideally, what you're looking at is you can look at retired judges, retired uh, advocates of the High Court, people who are, who, are, who are in the legal fraternity but are practicing something else, like CEOs of other companies. Uh, to be to constitute the Judicial Service Commission because they will not be seeking any favors. They will not appear before one another. I think the, 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 the idea was to have stakeholders uh, run, um, be members of the judiciary. But we, we've seen it, how it is turning out. Uh, I think a, 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 a member of LSK sitting on the Judicial Service Commission, yes. employing these people, yes. or people seeing him as a potential employer, yes. I think it's problematic, and it is something that can be revisited. Yes. I think it, can, it should be revisited. Yes. And um, um, oh. Do we need to change the law to revisit that, or we, you think it can be done through administrative or regulatory uh, mechanism? Some are embedded in the law. In the constitution, some of them. In the actually. constitution. Yes, yes, yes. So we need to revisit the constitution. Now we are talking about uh, the referendum, and, and, referendum and, and, and the things. The sticking, reformation of the constitution yes, itself. Yes. Things which are not working. Yes. I think we seize the opportunity and look at them. Hold on to your thoughts, uh, Dr. Nancy Baraza. Uh, viewer, we will go for a commercial break and we'll be right back. Thank you. Welcome back, viewer. If you're just joining us, our guest today is Dr. Nancy Baraza, the former Deputy Chief Justice and currently a senior lecturer at the University of Nairobi Law School. Welcome, Dr. Baraza, Nancy Baraza. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The other thing that the Kenyans are shackled with is the cost of professional services. Doctors, the debate right now that's prevalent in the country is that doctors are charging a lot of money. And the doctors said if you want us to cut down on our fees, then uh, you have to get the insurance companies also to cut down on their fees. Lawyers are damn expensive in this country. The common man is unable, the wanjiku of this country is unable to access that legal aid, that legal support that legal representation. Why? I know the constitution says that you can, the government can, has to give you what you, somebody who is going to do it, what you call the... The problem, the... The rank, mm. the, the, the cab rank. Mm. <laughs> the cab rank mm. in, in law, basically, which is, you know, but it's not working very well in the country. You cannot get lawyers who will come and uh, represent these people on, on a pro bono basis at, 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 at the level that we are looking at. What do we need to do? How do we rationalize uh, the, the cost of uh, legal representation in the country? I think lawyers are entitled to their fees. And um, I have seen um, um, the advocate's remuneration, yes. which was um, revised by uh, Chief Justice Mutunga. Um, those who can afford to pay for lawyers, um, it, it, it is a fair remuneration. Yes. But as you say, the ordinary Kenyan, the poor Kenyan, it's a problem. But um, the government, uh, through uh, enactment of the Legal Aid Act of, yes, of, yes. of 2016, yes. uh, is supposed to roll out, countrywide uh, roll out of, of legal aid. Mm -hmm. Uh, to ordinary Which has not been done. Yeah. It hasn't been done. I think uh, it's a new law, mm -hmm. uh, new mechanisms to be put in place. A board, mm -hmm. I think a board has been appointed, mm -hmm. and then it has a fund. Mm -hmm. 
which the government, if it really wants uh, ordinary Kenyans to access justice, mm -hmm. must fund it very, very well. Mm -hmm. I think there is a problem there of funding, mm -hmm. but um, I should say it's because it is a new program. Mm -hmm. And if it works, I think this is the only way that uh, ordinary poor Kenyans are going to access justice. It's an ambitious one, uh, but it should be funded. And uh, when it is rolled out, um, my hope is that uh, ordinary Kenyans will be able to access justice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Judiciary again. We have, we have had uh, situations in the country in which lawyers have helped themselves to clients' money, in which uh, lawyers have, uh, on many occasions, uh, eaten money that belongs to very poor people. And we haven't seen any lawyers serving. I think there's only one conviction that I remember myself, or even if there, there, there are two or three maximum. Any lawyer serving 20 years, 30 years in committee and other, to become a deterrent, a very powerful deterrent. We have situations right now because the legal fraternity itself also needs to have its internal mechanism to police itself so that the integrity and the dignity of the profession is upheld. That's why a lawyer is called a learned friend. It, because it's supposed to be an honorable, it's, it's supposed to be a stature that everybody aspires to. But we have issues in which poor ladies when they come with their piece of land or their plot which is being robbed from them, the lawyer will tell them, okay, fine, but you'll have to give me a third of that or half of that property once I'm able to, you know, make sure that this case is, is won. Or my fee will be a certain percentage. Or in many cases, the money ends up with a lawyer and it's never paid to the to clients, in good number of cases, uh, to the clients themselves. The, is, why is LSK's internal mechanisms for policing such unethical practices within within the legal fraternity itself, not, not being properly policed? I think they have, um, they, 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 uh, they it's advocated. It's there in paper, the, I know, yeah. The, yeah, they, 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 the lawyers who misappropriate um, client funds, who mm -hmm. misbehave, are reported there. And they are, we've had cases where uh, most of them have been uh, um, uh, disciplined, and they, they are practicing certificates withdrawn. So, so that mechanism is there. But as you say, actually, that is a very, very um, um, uh, big problem within the, 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 the lawyer's uh, fraternity. And uh, maybe they need to strengthen that uh, disciplinary me mechanism. A serious deterrent, so, like somebody serving 20 years, 30 years in jail. Do we have to change the law to be able to protect? Because in, in addition to that, still in the money, Sometimes a lawyer will call you and tell you, I'm not going to go to court this morning unless you bring me 100,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. And by the time you realize it's, it's not an accepted, and it's not an agreed price or agreed, agreed fees, but here is a lawyer who is holding his own clients hostages. It happens quite a lot, I've seen it, particularly in the high profile cases where there's big money involved and people are being. Uh, and, 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 is, is, and then, of course, uh, uh, lawyers selling off their own clients because the other side pays better and he's called and said, okay, mess up the case for this. I know of a petition that was drafted in the opponent's law firm. I will not say who it is, but in the opponent's law firm, here is your own lawyer, but he gets offered much more and he's there in the opponent's law firm. I know of a case in which a petition was lost by a petitioner. And in the evening, who does, does he see? He sees the other side and his lawyer sitting together somewhere. So this, these are the kind of things that happen, but which of course somebody who is an ordinary citizen in the country does not have the resources, plus the time, plus the know-how and everything else to follow this thing. And there are no serious laws to, 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 to avert such things. Dishonesty in, in, in such practices. What do we do to try and... Uh, deal with those kind of... Uh, I think malpractice, dishonesty, yes. unethical behavior, yes. unethical acts yes. are, 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 are part of what um, uh, the disciplinary body of the law society deals with. 
and uh, litigants uh, should know that. Uh, should do, we need, do we need a law? Don't we need a law? Do we need such people to be held to the to the courts instead the, uh, of appearing before their friends to give them disciplinary and say, uh, "I withdraw your certificate." He doesn't need a certificate to be withdrawn. Uh, he needs to go to jail for the rest of his life. Where they have stolen money, there is the criminal law. It, 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 the, the, the litigants can go to complain. Mm. And uh, where... Where your own lawyer, your own advocate has sold your case to your opponent for a better consideration than what you're paying him as a, I, as I a legal I fee. I think that is unethical behavior. Yes, yes. It is unethical behavior. Yes. And uh, it, 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 it should be reported uh, to the disciplinary committee, the disciplinary body of law, law society. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it deals with such. And mm -hmm. if really there is evidence of... Uh, such uh, malfeasance on the part of, of lawyers. Mm -hmm. Those are the unethical things that, mm -hmm. that are dealt with. Mm -hmm. And where there is theft of clients' money, mm -hmm. that is theft. A criminal law should take care of that. And people should go out there and report. Mm -hmm. And um, regarding fees, unless it is agreed fees, where a client is agreed you can pay whatever amount of money, there is the advocate remuneration order, mm -hmm. which um, gives guidelines mm -hmm. on how much to charge if it is a transaction, mm -hmm. if it is a sale, if it is, uh, it, it depends on the value mm -hmm. of, of the property. Mm -hmm. So that if you are overcharged, again, uh, I think that is cause to, to complain. Mm -hmm. uh, people saying, give me half of your land. I think that is something that uh, the, dis the, 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 the disciplinary uh, body can look into. Mm -hmm. We have a remuneration order which mm -hmm. tells us how much to charge. Mm -hmm. But people out there may not mm -hmm. know. Unfortunately, most they of the people know. who have got yeah. the land issues are mm -hmm. poor people. And maybe the father was an enlightened person, but the father is since dead. Uh, and, and, and the estate of the person, and they have issues between themselves or so sometimes you have a big man who is trying to grab their own property there. Mm. Uh, so those, uh, quite often, uh, the people who are suffering do not have the means, do not have the exposure mm. to be able to take their matters uh, to in the manner that you basically described right now. So what do, what do we do? I mean, do we not need to have a place where you can just walk into and say, look, this is the problem I have. A criminal investigation is done. Uh, a serious investigation in every sense is done. and. And, and, and such matters are dealt with uh, uh, properly, uh, such that whoever has gone and created a false title deed for the property of a poor lady here is, is, is the one who ends up in jail for the rest of his life. And, and not, not merely, or, or, or the lawyer who facilitated that, or advocate who facilitated that. We, don't we need some kind of a law that uh, I think the, the problem in this country is the ignorance. Mm -hmm. Ignorance of our processes, ignorance of our institutions mm -hmm. uh, among the, the majority of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And probably um, as LSK, mm -hmm. what I would uh, advise them mm -hmm. uh, is to decentralize their, their mecha mechanisms, their mm -hmm. institutions, mm -hmm. to reach the ordinary manainchi to say, mm -hmm. This law society has a body called the Disciplinary Committee, mm -hmm. and it has its office there. Mm -hmm. It is sensitizing people about mm -hmm. what mechanisms exist, what institutions exist. Mm -hmm. They are there. You may create or um, enact another law, mm -hmm. but how many Kenyans get to know about another law? Mm -hmm. And everything happening, we throw in a new law. Mm -hmm. Everything happening, we throw in a new law. Yeah. But how much of that law reaches the ordinary Kenyan? Mm -hmm. So you remain in the same situation. Mm -hmm. But I would expect, just like the judiciary has mm -hmm. done quite a bit of devolution, mm -hmm. it has, mm -hmm. as part of its reforms, mm -hmm. it, 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 it decentralizes its services. Yes. It has yes. taken the courts, even mobile courts, to the yes. most remote areas. Yes. Yes. And it has Which actually thanks sent... Thanks to your efforts, you uh, and, uh, and, and the Miri, Mutunga. Miri Mutunga you, you, you yes, really. and go out yeah. there and tell people here is our court. Mm -hmm. Same thing law society should do. Mm -hmm. That we have, because there are so many rogue lawyers, mm -hmm. there are lawyers stealing, mm -hmm. that is no good. Mm -hmm. So law society should also create a mechanism, mm -hmm. uh, w w you know, decentralize mm -hmm. their services mm -hmm. so that Kenyans know mm -hmm. that uh, a lawyer shouldn't take away your entire farm mm -hmm. because they represented you. Mm -hmm. So that law, uh, uh, litigants need to know 
that if your money disappears in the hands of your lawyers, mm -hmm. you have somewhere to go. But um, the thing is, uh, we, we are centralized. Mm -hmm. uh, centralized, yes. the services are centralized. Mm -hmm. And so the ordinary Kenyans remain in, in the dark, mm -hmm. in, in, in poverty, mm -hmm. in deprivation. Mm -hmm. Yes. What do you think? You think uh, we need to give the investigative arm of the government, the DCI, in this case, sweeping powers to be able to listen to the phone conversations of people when they suspect. Uh, and, and that can be used also as evidence in court. I know we, the, the privacy, the protection of privacy is there. And, and if given this kind of, of, of um, uh, uh, window to people in the DCI, uh, a lot of misuse will definitely happen. People will just go and pry into the private lives of everybody. But here are serious cases when members of parliament are discussing corruption, that they're being, they're, their support is being bought in, 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 uh, uh, for the floor of the house. This is a series of discussions where somebody will say, I'll fix this with the judge, and you will get this, this and these favorable judgments. And most of the time, people talk on the telephones. So in the event that uh, 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 an investigator has information, so-and-so is a fixer for this judge of any court, Supreme Court, uh, Court of Appeal, uh, High Court, whichever it is, or so-and-so is basically an MP is involved in this kind of a graft, whether it is fixing a government contract somewhere or getting a payment and, 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 or, or it is a ghost payment, for example, like the NYS and the rest of it. Don't you think we need to have a law that allows our, our investigative arm to eavesdrop into those conversations because the cost, That's the a cost dicey, is too dicey, powerful. That's a dicey question. <laughs> it touches on our right to privacy, yes, etc. Yes, it I is understand. A dicey yes, one. Yeah, but corruption is killing the country. So what yes, do we do? Yes, but corrupt people, we see them, we know them. If people came out to report that in this county government, tenders are being given to relatives, which is happening, yes. and everybody knows, Tenders are being given to incompetent people who have no idea about how to, to make a road. And paying, and paying, and money. paying the yes, money. Yes. I think people know. And people should have the courage to go and report. We don't need to use strip. On. We, we don't need to. You remember just, the, you remember. just let people go to report. Mm. And in the counties, it is so easy. It is so easy. Whom have you given the award at the tender? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is easy. The only problem is uh, probably our, uh, our inability to try and control that so that it does not become an open check for everybody to eavesdrop on everybody else. But you remember the Watergate tips? Mm. That was the president of the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Trump has been talking on his phone and, and he, the, all his conversations from the White uh, Oval Office are recorded. And that's the president of the United States of America. The presumption is that that man has a trust of the country. So you cannot protect his, uh, his, his, uh, his uh, trading off of the trust uh, uh, purely on the altar of saying we're protecting privacy. So when there's a serious thing, it might have to go through maybe a step or two steps, but when a serious information can be given that so-and-so is dealing with so-and-so, it doesn't happen too often. All we need to do is to, uh, for, the, uh, for DCI to arrest five, six, seven, ten of them, and everybody knows that, that phone is not, no longer safe, and that thing is going to reduce because nobody can walk to somebody else's office anytime he wants uh, a favorable uh, or rather cuts a deal. For example, there's a judge, and, and that judge we'll have to have somebody to come to him and tell him, look, fix the case of so-and-so, and you get paid so much. But if he knows, if he or she knows that there's a powerful ifs dropping of all the judges, and that in the event that there's anything that essentially is a malpractice, in anything that has got a, a powerful connection to corruption, then the possibility of that evidence being used in court is there. Uh, I think people will, will fear more. <laughs> um. I think I, I, think I don't it's, like it's, I don't like what you call the attack on the privacy of anybody. But this country is going to go down the drain. We're going to collapse because of corruption. If we're going to lose 400, 500 billion, 600 billion every year on corruption, mm -hmm. then then we will never be able to get out of that hole. 
Now, I wish, we wouldn't even be able to pay our debts. I wish we had people we could point to that one is a corrupt one. That one is going to instruct so and so. So it, it, it is a very difficult situation. Mm -hmm. But I think if, if, if issues are reported to the DCI, I'm sure they have mechanisms. They have their own ears somehow. The, the For problem, me, the let me tell you. The problem is using that as evidence. The problem is that will not be used as evidence. It cannot be used in a court of law. Really? Yeah, so okay. we then need to have a piece of legislation that allows such things or uh, through another process. Probably that's something that can be <laughs> visited. Yes. But uh, for me and the judiciary, yes. uh, for me, I, I was so sure mm -hmm. this is something we could crack. Yes. Yes. I know. Just I know. do... Lifestyle audit yes. on these judges, you'll yes. find who yes. has been corrupt yes. and who hasn't. And we knew them. Yes. It, yes. Is not, it is not hard. On them and their families. Just do that, you'll yes. get. And not just on the judges. Mm -hmm. On all these people, civil servants. Mm -hmm. Why would the civil servants who earn the, 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 the good little pay that we all get? Mm -hmm as public servants, would have be the, high the, rise towers everywhere. Everywhere. And, and they are big and, and fat everywhere yes. because they eat well. There's, you there's, know? there's a clerk. Was there a clerk? What was yes. he in uh, uh, yes. NHIF? Yes. Who used to take a helicopter rides to his I, office? I think we've lost our moral yeah. uh, high ground. We've mm. lost our moral fiber. Mm. It is gone. All right? Yes. For you to know that is uh, stolen money, corruption money, mm -hmm and you're floundering it around, flying in helicopters. Mm -hmm. I think for me, that one is bad enough. But and the boys and the girls if, and the family also. Yes, 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 that is wrong. You, you, you taking, have taking no... Taking a million shillings, we, we saw some such, videos. Yeah. Such people are so dead inside. Mm. For you to take the money, the mm. taxpayers' money, which mm. should go to people's health care, yes, yes. and then your children have millions in their account. Those yes. are people for me are dead, dead inside. Mm -hmm. And um, as we wait for God to judge them, mm -hmm. I think these are fellows we can grab. Mm -hmm. And take them to and court. And take them to court. Yes. I don't know why it takes, it takes so long. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't take long. You trace money in mm -hmm. people's accounts, mm -hmm. grab them and take them to court. That mm -hmm. money is meant for Kenyans. It, it, mm -hmm. it is our tax. We are paid such little money as public servants. Mm -hmm. Your tax is what is going into somebody's Where pocket. should it start? What about the politicians mm -hmm. who are going to Harambe every other weekend and giving out a lot of money? We should follow that. Mm -hmm. Whose money is that? Mm -hmm. Follow them. Mm -hmm. And you'll get either they are disposing of mm -hmm. public land, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Looking for an institution mm -hmm. to buy a Go pub government land. Government contracts. Yeah, and government buying its own land mm -hmm. for 600 million. Mm -hmm. We, we know these things, but we are not serious enough. We don't follow. Why would somebody sudden, we know the economy of Kenya. We know how big or small it is. How are people becoming billionaires in a day? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is so easy for me from where I sit. It is so, so easy. Mm -hmm. And we struggled so much to get that constitution. I was in it. I know. And we went around the country. Mm -hmm. And we saw the poverty mm -hmm. of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And that is why we created devolution. Mm -hmm. And we thought uh, the government will go nearer the people. It mm -hmm. will deliver services. Mm -hmm. and, and the resources will move nearer to the people. Mm -hmm. But what are we seeing now? Mm -hmm. We are creating... You devolve corruption. Yeah. Merely. People in the villages and who have no touch with the ordinary Wanjiko. Yes. For me, it, it, it is painful. A number of counties were reported as having, yeah. spent, having spent nothing for two years or close to two years. Anything, nothing on, on, uh, on development. I, uh, it, it is true people yes. are stealing money in those counties. Yes. It is true. Yes. Everybody's eye is there. Mm -hmm. They are stealing, mm -hmm. which for me again is unfortunate. It's criminal. And it doesn't need new laws, uh, rocket science. No. Mm. Follow these fellows. Where is our money? How have we accounted for it? Do you have systems in place? Mm. Where fellows are operating without systems in place, the presumption should be mm. you are misusing our money. Yes. Absolutely. And, and I, I feel pained because we mm. struggled so hard mm -hmm. to get this constitution, mm -hmm. to get devolution. And then we devolve and the people... 
down there just stealing the money. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. should go hear about the tenders. Mm -hmm. It sickens you. Yeah. Somebody, a governor gives his relatives, they are yes. doing some strange yes. road here, yes. some yes. strange borehole yes. there which yes. is never mm -hmm. functional. Mm -hmm. And I think that is theft. Mm -hmm. And let's not baptize it mm -hmm. with another name. Yes. It is theft yes. and the fellows should just be brought to book to account for what they are doing for mm -hmm. Kenyans. Many of them are found in corruption, in criminal matters sometimes. Holders of indep uh, what they call uh, independent uh, offices, governors, and they come back to the office the following day. Because our mechanisms are weak. What do you think the judge should have done in that case? Uh, we, of, 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 of somebody who, who is, is taken to court on corruption, and the matter has not been concluded yet, but he's a public servant. So ordinarily we used to say public servants who have done such things should be interdicted. But this new constitution and the independent offices and governors and devolved units it's, 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 diff it's looking different, it's looking difficult, increasingly difficult. And judges are just letting them off the hook. Mm. Letting them off the hook in the sense that they allow them to go back to the offices. And, 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 and steal more in some cases. Get rid of the evidence in some cases. I, I think, um, okay, there are those provisions of um, uh, people's rights in the constitution. The at, at the expense of, of the nation. Mm. Yes, but they can be revisited. And for me, from where I sit, mm. I do not think uh, you are right to... To bail. To bail. Yes. It's absolute. Over, overrides the national I, interest. Or... I don't think it's absolute. And indeed, not any right. Uh, every other right is absolute. Where we see that if we release you, we give you bail, you are going to convolute the entire system. Uh, system. I think it's something to be revisited. And if I'm a Keep judge, mm. really, it is common sense. It is common sense. Yes, yes. yes. It is common sense. I, yes. think, I think we've just refused to do our job. I remember the late Onyonka had an issue because at a rally, I think his bodyguard drew a pistol and killed one of the people who attended the rally. And he stayed in committee until the matter was concluded by the, by the courts. So if somebody is there as a suspect in a corporal, in a corporal uh, offense, in a capital offense, sorry, in a capital offense, then what do we do, in your opinion? Don't, you, don't we have to revert back to the old system in which somebody, if you are there, you are a suspect in a murder, then you'll stay in, 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 in jail until the matter is concluded. <sighs> I think the issue of the new constitution and the protection of people's rights, probably if, if people are so um, uh, positivist in interpreting the constitution, yes, yes. then maybe we need to, to revisit. And, 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 and if you are a broad-minded judge, yes. if you are a, a, a positive mm -hmm. uh, uh, judge, mm. there are things which you, you don't need um, the law to to tell you do this and that. You, you exercise your discretion, yeah. all right? Yeah. But um, I think it, mm. we, 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 are, we, we are married to the black letter law yes. we, uh, when, you know, as judges, as, uh, when we interpret the law. But the constitution is very clear. It says that you cannot sacrifice substantive justice on the altar of pro procedures and technicalities. And here are judges who are basically always using technicalities to uh, pass their judgments. That's unfortunate. And then, and then mm -hmm. with the, the government, we're living what in, in sociological jurisprudence, which you are an authority in, is that the law lives in the society. You, you see what I mean? Uh -huh. And, 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 and uh, such public outrage against people who are either arrested on grand corruption or on murder being let out and there's such a powerful public outcry and the judges don't give a damn and say that the law you know allows somebody to be put out on bail and they give somebody on bail can they see the mood in the country can they see because they're living the, the judges are living in the society the part of society um for me i i, I feel it is a bit unfortunate um when we decide to be technical 
-hmm. The constitution mo moves us away from technicality. Mm -hmm. The constitution um, requires a very broad interpretive approach mm -hmm. to the law, mm -hmm. to the rights, mm -hmm. to itself, mm -hmm. uh, so that it, it moves us, mm -hmm. even as judges, it mm -hmm. moves us away mm -hmm. from the old order. S school of thought, yeah. Uh, old school of thought. Yes where what matters is what is written. The procedure, the, the technicality. Yes, and what the black letter says, the black I, letter I have, law says. I, I have seen a situation in yeah. which half the votes themselves yeah. was not transmitted, which means there's no election information that was transmitted. But because there was a mix-up on a polling station and a polling center, uh, the judge said, no, this were not prayed for in the, in the, in the petition. No, the constitution moves away from technicalities. Absolutely. I think we should be Absolutely. broader. Look Absolutely. at issues more Absolutely. broadly. Absolutely. Look at uh, the issues of rights more yes. broadly. Yes. Look yes. at society. We, mm. we, law and society are not separate. Absolutely. They are not. Absolutely. So, so that uh, as we make our decisions, mm. we should not be so distant from, from society itself, which we serve. Yes, yes. And what are your final thoughts? Uh, uh, I want you to address Kenyans. I want you to address your colleagues in the legal fraternity, in uh, uh, address the leaders, even address parliament. Maybe in a few minutes' time you can tell Kenyans what you feel is where we got it wrong and where we can get it right. I think we got a, a good constitution, but we hardly implement it. Uh, we are not implementing it. The spirit of the constitution, we haven't uh, got it yet. And uh, the issue of corruption, I think talking alone is not enough. I think let's be serious. We know who is corrupt. Be serious about lifestyle audits. Go to those counties and grab those fellows who are taking uh, money that is meant to go uh, to the services for Kenyans. I, th I think it can be done. It can be done. It, it, it doesn't need uh, rocket science. It can be done. We know who, and you Kenyans know who uh, the corrupt are amongst you. Uh, instead of condemning them, uh, we celebrate them and we, we send out real uh, wrong messages. But I believe in this country. It is a beautiful country. Kenyans are hardworking and Kenyans deserve better. So fight the corruption and mean it. Let it not just be talk show, mean it. And, and I believe with devolution, um, this country can change and Wanjiku can lead a better life. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Dr. Nancy Baraza. Thank it's you. been a very good uh, show. And I'm sure it's not going to be the last show. We will still have to invite you into the show again. Thank you. To allow an opportunity to Kenyans also to share your wealth of experience and knowledge. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Viewers, we have come to the end of our show.